I'm George Edson, one of the 20 directors of the Cornish Fair, and we're going to take a tour around the fair today and show you what it's all about. Tell us what the rescue squad does at the Cornish Fair. We provide first aid coverage, and we do it the entire time that the fair is open. We are here from the time the gate opens till we're closed at night, and uh, meanwhile we're covering the towns of Plainfield, Meriden, and Cornish at the same time. Seems to have been fairly quiet, and that's the way you like it? We've had our share of usual things. Um, yeah, I'd like to see it quiet, and I'm glad the weather's holding up. And the Falcone family is here. We've uh, seen them before. They're regulars at the Cornish Fair. So, Hannah, tell us what it's all about. I just like being here and showing my sheep. I like interacting with the public and t telling them what I know. And I enjoy showing them my little sheep and lambs. Yeah. And you are one of five sisters. It's the Five Sisters Farm. Two sisters handy by. And have all the sheep classes been held already? Um, every one of them except lead line, which is going to happen tonight. It's when you dress up in a wool outfit and you walk the sheep around and you get scored on your outfit. The Connecticut Valley Home Care and Hospice is providing a health screening clinic and they're conducting blood pressure, blood sugar, and cholesterol mm -hmm. checks. We're here at Summertime Farm, which is part of the dairy show. So can you tell us uh, what your, tell us about your farm? Well, actually, we just have um, just a young stock at our farm. Um, and it started off as a 4-H project, and the kids were showing them in 4-H. And then they go back to uh, a couple of dairy farms um, during the wintertime and when they become cows. Hence, that's why we're called Summertime Farm. Well, that makes sense. I've noticed you relaxing over here, so uh, it seems like you have a good time at the Cornish Fair. I love the Cornish Fair. We've been going here for 15 plus years and say just love coming here. It's always inviting. Love to see all the animals. It's a great fair. Have you ever been to the Cornish Fair before? No, never been here. <laughs> like how many years have you not been here? No, I've been here every fair they ever had. In the distance, you see the blacksmith shop, and we'll visit there shortly. We are between events in oxen pulling, We're setting up the sled for the next event, and some of our food booths. And here we are in the Tractor Club Museum and with Alan Tewksbury. Alan, tell us what the museum's all about. Uh, it's a good collection of old farm equipment and things that bring you back quite a few days. We're getting to the time now where the newer generation haven't even never seen any of this stuff. A few of us older folks know a little bit about some of it, but it's uh, a lot of history to bring back so people can see it. And these materials came from a variety of places, uh, like what? Uh, a lot of this, a lot of the stuff. There was a bunch of people in the club that had some stuff. When we get the barn built, we had to uh, scurry around for about two weeks. We had to get all the stuff together. So anybody that had anything old, kind of grabbed it all together and we put it together and brought it in. And then we had a lot of people from the area and it come to the fair. And over the years, they keep donating stuff. You know, they'll come to the fair and say, oh, I got something like that, so they'll uh, donate it to us. Well, it's made a fine collection, and it's a, it's of great interest to a lot of people. We have some lo a loom over here. What do we have going on over here? Yeah, they got a loom over here. She's making scarves and uh, stuff like that. They're more or less showing people now just how to, how to make it. But she makes nice scarves and, and weaves a lot of other things over there. And the woman next to her, she is... Uh, doing rugs. She uh, hand weaves rugs and then you can see on the table uh, the handbag and stuff is all made out of modern day plastic bags that you get at the grocery store and you don't know what to do with. She's making rugs and handbags out of them. 
Here we have Danny Moore from the Tractor Club, and he is showing us what a one a, a one lunger hit and miss. What is it? Tell us about the motor. It's a 1915 Maynard hit and miss gas engine, and we got it belted to an ice cream freezer, and we're making showing people how homemade ice cream is made. And hit and miss, I guess, uh, makes sense if you just listen to it. Right. That's the that's the governing system of the engine, and. When it pops is when it hits, and when it's not popping is when it misses. Well, I heard that the ice cream might be ready in 10 minutes, so I bet we'll be back. Well, there's a lot of people coming back. <laughs> Thank you very much. And here we have Gerald Gingrass from Errol, New Hampshire. And Gerald win, Jerry wins a lot of prizes here every year, including those you're looking at. Uh, tell us about this chainsaw. Uh, this is the open hot saw, or the speed siren. And uh, I was fortunate enough, we had a lot of good competitors this year, but I, uh, I put in a, a good cut and came out on top. It's a, it started out life as a dirt bike motor, and uh, we run it on some pretty crazy fuel. It runs on the same fuel as the top, top fuel dragsters, um, methanol and nitromethane. Well, this Woodsman's Field Day contest up here is uh, one of the biggest of its types in New Hampshire and Vermont, and uh, something well worth seeing at the Cornish Fair. Thank you very much, Jerry. Thank you. You know, it's a great honor to come here. I've been coming as a kid. This marks 30-plus uh, years I've been coming and competing here, so it's a, it's a real honor to uh, take home a first-place trophy. Ready, go! Jeremy, who is this? The sponsor, and what is this all in favor of? Yeah. Ours for Kids, a nonprofit children's charity out of Springfield, Vermont. And uh, how many number of classes? Uh, we offer... 17 different classes. We didn't film them all today. I think we got about 14 total. Well, we've been watching it and filming it. Uh, thank you very much. Go. Pat, can you tell us a little bit about the 4-H horse activities that were held yesterday? Okay, so yesterday we had our Sullivan County 4-H horse show here in the ring, um, which basically any 4-H youth that has an approval form which is done in advance saying that they own this horse or they work with this horse and help take care of a horse they can lease a horse so they all came here we had 17 riders yesterday and something really neat happened yesterday because many of our riders were riding for the first time uh, a lot of our seniors have moved on gone to college and we had probably eight or nine children between the ages of 8 and 12 that had never been in a show and some of them had horses that had never been in shows. So we chose to slow down our show and let some of those new kids go in and be led around, let them see what was happening over here where the other horses were working. Um, and by the time the show was over, everyone rode in all the classes that they'd planned to and actually one of the most problematic, kind of scary scared horses actually did some of the best work in the trail class where they go over obstacles and stuff like that so it was a win-win that sounds like what 4-h and the cornish fair are all about that's exactly what it's all about and that's why i do this thank you pat you bet and now we run into nicole galloway and nicole is the chairman of the queen contest at the cornish fair which was last night so we won't get to see that on film today uh, but Nicole can tell us a little bit about that contest. Uh, well, unfortunately, Mother Nature wasn't cooperating at first. We got plagued with rain on the stage, and then our sound equipment had some issues. But once we got started, uh, the pageant ran very smoothly, pretty quick, in and out, within about an hour and 20 minutes. Had uh, 10 lovely ladies and a nice gentleman who was crowned our king. Um, our winner is Ashley Winslow, who's walking around the fair somewhere today. Uh, she's from Ware, New Hampshire. Um, our first runner-up was Jessica Crow from Claremont, New Hampshire. Second runner-up was Rachel Lyons from Claremont. Uh, third runner-up was Evelyn Cormier from Claremont. <laughs> and Sierra Walker was our fourth runner-up from Claremont. Sierra also was our congeniality winner, and Evelyn was our talent winner. And then Jacob Tenney from Charlestown, New Hampshire, was crowned uh, this year's king. And Nicole, you've done this for how many years? I have been affiliated with the Cornish Fair King and Queen pageant since I was 17 years old. And I won't tell you how old I am. <laughs> And she's 19 now, so it's been two years. And uh, Nicole has been chairman now for a number of years, and since she took it over, it has been fantastic. It has attracted 
more young ladies and has been extremely popular. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. The theme of the parade was tractors this year, so we didn't have a tractor. So I said, well, what does a horse and a tractor have in common? And that would be horsepower. So this was our quarter horsepower animal. And then we had another one that was this big that was our half horsepower. And then we had the one in the corner that was our three-fourths horsepower. And then we had two full-size horses that were one horsepower. And all the kids got to lead horses or ride a stick horse or carry a sign. And Mr. Biggs was kind of leading the parade. And this is kind of a little decoration. Does it fit the What's Mary Ann doing? No, you're filming this. And here is Mr. Wheeler, who is obviously with the ox pulling contingent. So tell us about the ox pulling. I don't know what you want to know. <laughs> well, are, you, are these your animals? Yeah. Now, is it true that an ox is just another name for a steer, which is a castrated male? Yeah. The, after five years old, they're an ox. Before then, they're a steer. Okay, there you go. And are you waiting for a class later tonight? Yeah, well, 32 class coming right up. 3,200, and that means that the team weighs 3,200 pounds. Yeah, that's what they weigh, 3,200. I like 3,200. Okay, and uh, in a minute we'll pan over to the scale sheds, and every team has to be weighed at every event, because even though Mr. Wheeler would never tell a lie, we don't know what the team weighs till we weigh them. Is that right? Yes, that's the truth. That we had to weigh them every day, every fair. And uh, is there a free for all tonight, or a larger class tonight? Yes, there is a free for all class tonight. You don't have to weigh them for that. Anything can go, you know. And where are you from, and how many animals did you bring here? Oh, I see. I don't even know. We got two trailer loads. I guess uh, I didn't even count them. <laughs> we got 16 bulls at home, so we got most of them here, I guess. Well, that's wonderful. And you're from where? Sutton, New Hampshire. Thank you very much, Mr. Wheeler. This is the way they'd set up. That's what we're presenting today. In the early war, they they would have been up here, you know, recruiting and mustering up too. So they. would be camping together until they got sent sent out. And this is your first year here, and we're real glad to have you here. Uh, are you a, a club, an organization, and where are you out of? Well, we're members of a bunch of different places. Uh, some of us are members of a reenactment group called uh, the Third Vermont Civil War Hemlocks, and most of those guys are up in the Northeast Kingdom, but. Uh, there's a bunch from all over Vermont, and uh, we're also members of the Sons of the Union Veterans. There's a, a fairly reorganized camp uh, in Lebanon, New Hampshire, and, um, and we have one member. He's not here today, but he's also a, a shooter. He's a member of the North-South Skirmish Association, where they shoot competitively from the original weapons. Tell us the significance of the tents. Well, this is a wall tent here. There, um, this is characteristic of what uh, the officers would have been sleeping in. And uh, it's much more spacious and probably a little drier than these here. Uh, from, from 1862 on, the Army started catching on about carrying small things and lighter. Um, so this would have been one half of a tent that a soldier would have carried. And then he got together with another buddy and buttoned it together. It's what the uh, army has used for over a hundred years. It's called the uh, pup tent or dog tent. That's what it was nicknamed as. And I've heard that uh, even today they still use a, a form of this. Uh, the, the Marines do in, in uh, the basic training. I think there's a famous picture of Lincoln and Grant sitting in front of a tent that looks very much like this officer's tent over here. That may have been, yeah. I know there's there's one, uh, I think it was after Antietam that you saw them, um, Lincoln sitting in with uh, McClellan. McClellan. Okay. Yeah, and that. that was now, is this a real chicken over here? Uh, no, that's a rubber chicken, but we still plan to eat that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a rubber real chicken. <laughs> yeah, it is. So this is our this is our first kind of a first attempt at cooking a, a chicken on a spit or on a rope here. Uh, we'll see how that comes out. If that rope gets too well done, I think it's going to be uh, yeah. 
gotta, sitting in your fire. We got to keep it wet. Yeah. Oh, that's that's broil chicken later. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you. Blooming onion. You got to have a blooming onion when you come to the Cornish Fair. Only one. But oh, well, he's got one too. But only okay. one. Okay. But I I uh, exhibited in the Cornish Fair through 4-H for 10 years. Yeah. And uh, now that I live in Cornish, it's the quickest fair to get to. Right. <laughs> and I even won we even won the uh, log and truck award one year. So. Another satisfied customer. Very satisfied customer. <laughs> Thank you. And here at the Cornish Fair, we have both horse pulling and ox pulling and pony pulling. Uh, today we have five classes of ox pulling, and we have been uh, through three of those classes. We have another one that starts at 4 o'clock, and then the large oxen, what we call the free-for-all oxen, start at 7 o'clock tonight. And you have been uh, doing this work for quite a number of years. Your father before you? That's correct. The first fair that had ox pulling, my uncle and my father ran it. I think it was 1950 or 51. And so there's been an Allen running it ever since. Today we have the Prince with us. And Prince, tell us your name. Jake Galloway. And you are from where? Sunapee, New Hampshire. It's what we call the scale barn. And as we mentioned previously, the ox and horse teams are all weighed here. And uh, it costs a lot of money to put on a fair. Just to, every couple of years, we need to be re have the scales recalibrated. The state comes in, and uh, it costs about five hundred dollars to do that. So that's one of the many things behind the scenes that a lot of people wouldn't realize go on. The Cornish Fair couldn't exist without loyal sponsors and exhibitors. And Townline Equipment is right up there at the top of the list. We have Drew Maraza with us today. And uh, Drew, how many years do you suppose? Uh, your family has been at the Cornish Fair with your tractors? Uh, at least 27, because I've been here every year. <laughs> you were born here? Yeah, yeah, I haven't missed one, whether I was enjoying it or working here, and probably both are the same. Your father would often be sitting in this chair and your mother next to me, and uh, they must be taking a few minutes off. They are. Mom was here yesterday. I don't know if Dad will make it this year or not, but uh, my brother's been here, and his nine-month-old son has been here, too. Well, that's a, a family history of involvement in the Cornish Fair, and as they say, Townline has been extremely important to us, and we appreciate everything they've done. Entertainment is a big part of the Cornish Fair, and we have Horses Horses, a specialty show, uh, great entertaining value, and they are here uh, from time to time, not every year, but often, and they're here this year, and it's a, it's a great show. Here is Bodie Kelton. And uh, Bodie and his family have been very active in fairs. His father, Charlie Kelton, uh, is or has been uh, the head of the Rutland Fair for years and years at Vermont. What's it called? The Vermont what? Vermont State Agricultural Society out of Rutland, Vermont. He's one of the directors. Uh, him, Bob Bear, and Richard River runs the fair. Uh, it's been there 168 years this year. Uh, they own the uh, buildings and grounds and just five years ago they put new uh, facilities in for bathrooms for handicapped people and so forth. Um, the Cornish Fair is an all-volunteer fair. Uh, we're always excited to come up here because everyone in the area chips in and really gives it their all. Uh, from Steve Hevesides in the parking lot to the Atwoods to you folks uh, that, that give their time and effort uh, we're expecting nothing back except maybe a smile on a fairgoer's face. So uh, we're, we're always excited to come to Cornish and we always try to bring our best show here. Well Bodie did remind me of the volunteer uh, aspect of this and uh, it is unbelievable the amount of work that our directors do and each one has their own niches and uh, hours and hours and hours of, of effort and detail work to put this together every year a three-day event that starts and stops in three days from the booklet in the valley news to the way the grounds are laid out everybody gets a fair shot at where they sit and what they do. And I, I just think if you if you talk to the smallest exhibitor and the guy who brings the most stuff, Townline Equipment, I would guess would be our biggest exhibitor here, uh, they're all very happy to be here and very excited to be here. And we, we have coming in here 
the director of the Vermont State Fair and his Vermont State Fair van, Charlie Kelton. <laughs> Thank you. We might just talk to Charlie. Yes, I, I think you'd get a, a, a better rotation. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, up drives Charlie Kelton himself. And we've been talking with Bodie in, uh, in detail. And tell us a little bit about your history in the fair business. Well, it goes back a long ways. I've got uh, 1932 ribbons, 4-H ribbons, for the Rutland Fair. Now, of course, we changed it to the State Fair. So uh, that's, it was a long time ago. And uh, World of Mirth came uh, on a railroad show, two full train loads. It was uh, a lot of happy memories. Uh, my dad had brown Swiss cattle, and of course the big deal was the, was the cavalcade, the grandstand was full, uh, and of course the racehorses. Things have changed. Things have changed, and you've been a part of that change, and, uh, and uh, a lot of the credit for it goes to you, and it was a great to run into you, and, uh, and good to talk to you. Good to talk to you. See ya. Even if a cow is at a fair, it needs to be milked twice a day. So. This is what's going on at this point. Every dairy cow here that is milking has to be milked. And they're lined up here to, uh, to do that. Regulations today don't allow for the sale of this milk to be used by the public for consumption because they can't track it. And new laws indicate that we have to know where all of our food comes from. And this would be impossible with this mixed bunch of cows so what's going to happen is this milk is collected and it goes into a tank and it's picked up by a pig farmer and it's used to feed the pigs. The Skymaster, one of the more popular rides here. And when those cars get to the top, the uh, people are sitting upside down as you can see. So that may be something that would attract you to go to the Cornish there. Food booths and more food booths and rides and more rides. In the town hall there's an art show and sale. Under the tent there's bingo put on by the Cornish Fire Department. And the famous barbecue from Mount Holly, Vermont. The fun never ends. We've talked about a lot of organizations that benefit from the fair. And this is an excellent example. So tell us the name of your organization. Uh, Twin State Trailbusters Snowmobile Club from Lebanon, New Hampshire. What are you doing with these onions? We are making blooming onions. Paul here is uh, actually cutting the top off, but not the root, and then uh, peeling the first layer. And then from there, they go over to the chopper where Dana's cutting them into a flower. And as you see, you do get some waste because behind there he's got a stack of ones that didn't come out right. And then they go through a wet batter process and then a dry batter process. And then in the back window where they're fried on each side for two minutes a piece. And then you cut the core out, which would take the root out of the onion and put your dipping sauce in there, which would be ranch or horseradish or ketchup. And out the front door it goes. And how many years has your organization been coming to the Cornish Fair? This is our 14th year. And this amounts to what percentage of your annual income? Uh, probably about 90. And you go to how many other fairs? This is the only fair we do because we're all volunteers and three days here is enough normally. <laughs> I just have one more question. I want to know if you're forced to eat the waste. Uh, we eat a lot of the waste, <laughs> so, but we don't eat it all. <laughs> At the end of the weekend, you don't want an onion. You don't want an onion because your hands will smell, and you just smell like onions for days, but yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The Cornish Fair Stage is the Whalen Entertainment Pavilion. Thank you, Whalen Industries and uh, Whalen Engineering in Charlestown. And... People are waiting for the next show. It's divided into two stages. And more of our food booths, the Division of Forests and Lands, is here. They're here every year, um, bringing forth their message. You're looking at Kids Central over there, which is a place for kids to do various activities and parents to rest and relax. And again, more, more booths 
and vendors.